Just want to uh, spend a few minutes here talking about uh, some new research that's emerging, uh, talking about shallow banded uh, volatilization losses from urea. When we look back at the research from 30 years ago, we took uh, broadcast urea, banded it four to five inches deep, found a marked increase in efficiency, and then uh, that catalyzed or, or facilitated the transition from surface application down to soil deep banded nitrogen. You fast forward through 30 years of, of agriculture and equipment development, we've gone from multiple field passes, deep banding now, uh, we're often zero tilling, putting all our nutrients down at the time of seeding in a one single pass. So our, our nitrogen placement in many cases has gone from four to five inches deep 30 years ago, now to two inch, one and a half inch, sometimes even shallower than that. We don't have a lot of soil over top the surface. So we set up a demonstration, I guess, uh, based on some, some new research coming out of Eastern Canada, uh, looking at uh, validating this whole, whole matter on shallow banded volatilization. So I simply here took uh, potting soil, fill these containers. Uh, we're looking at this uh, just about two weeks after we've started them. Um, but uh, seeded flax in here, broadcast seeded flax in the soil surface and uh, watered it and germinated it. So this is the unfertilized check. Then we, uh, I, I, I did different rates. This one here uh, is 50 pounds of nitrogen banded in the soil an inch and a half deep. And as we go through these, we're starting to see uh, we'll start to see at higher rates an influence and impact on, on the plant population. So now at 100 pounds banded an inch and a half deep, we're starting to see more, um, or I shouldn't say more, I should say uh, uh, less flax in the, in the middle of the pot. And then finally at our, uh, at our highest banded rate, uh, 200 pounds of actual end uh, in this container, down the middle we see certainly a, um, a lot thinner stand. So some of this could be due to ammonia toxicity, could be due to root pruning and dieback. But the other thing that we've identified is the potential for um, volatilization gassing off. So it's uh, um, another, another thing to, to take note on these containers, you look at root development. On the bottom, you'll see this is the unfertilized check, so very uh, extensive root development. And then on the 200 pounds per acre uh, of actual N, uh, a lot, uh, a lot um, pruned roots and, and, and poor root development. So the other, <laughs> excuse me, the other um, thing we've done to help visualize um, nitrogen loss, there's a passive ammonia detection tube. And this is uh, often used in occupational health and safety where, where ammonia emissions can be present. What they do is they break the, the end of this glass tip off, put it in a pocket, and over time ammonia, uh, if ammonia is present, this purple color changes to yellow. So in, in this demonstration from, uh, is kind of mirroring some work that was done in Eastern Canada, and they looked at um, uh, banded urea. In this case, I banded 100 pounds of nitrogen, uh, inch and a half deep, and set this in in, in this container for seven days. And the, the purple uh, coloration changed uh, quite dramatically. Now at this point, I can't quantify how many pounds of nitrogen loss that represents, but really what it's indicating is that at 200 pounds or at 100 pounds, we actually can visualize that ammonia come out of the soil. Historically, um, Western Canadian agriculture, we believe that if it's in the soil, it's safe. Um, but I think when we look at this evolution of, of cropping systems and tillage and technology over the last number of years, um, we have solved a lot of problems in terms of maybe seeding efficiency with getting bigger equipment and going wider. Um, the one challenge that we may have inadvertently created is a new problem with this placement of nitrogen up close to the soil surface. So this is one of the tools we're looking at. Uh, out of interest, I took a, another, another container. Uh, so this first one was 100 pounds um, banded an inch and a half deep. This next one was 100 pounds broadcast uh, in the container. And comparatively speaking, the mark here is, is halfway up the tube, and this is a lot farther from the banded. So it's kind of counterintuitive that now our, our banded urea is actually showing greater loss than the, uh, uh, than the broadcast. So we've got a lot of unanswered questions here, and this is uh, part of our, our Canadian agronomy strategy where we're going to be investing in, in research to, to further validate how real this uh, shallow band loss issue is and what are some of our management tools. Right now we know there's there's some real opportunities to um, um, uh, 
to, to manage the losses if, if it is actually happening. Uh, really three strategies. We can look at uh, deep banding, I guess placing our nitrogen back deep, but that may come at a cost in terms of horsepower, iron, fuel consumption, uh, seedbed integrity and quality, the, some of those kind of things. So we may not have the physical abilities to do that. Uh, the other opportunity we can look at doing is, is stabilizing it uh, in a sideband with some of the technology that's in the, in the marketplace. Um, so yeah, there's some options as we go forward if, if we truly find this is as big as a, of an issue as we believe it is. So anyways, stay tuned and uh, as more information becomes available, uh, we'll get it out, uh, out to the marketplace. Thanks.